All right, everyone, so for today on our first day of class, the first network that we're going to focus on is Twitter. And I would say the trinity of social networks at the moment is Twitter, Google+, and Facebook, exactly what we're going to talk about in this section. You might have also heard of Pinterest. That's also a very important network, which we would talk about with more time. There's also Instagram, Snapchat, what else? What other networks have you heard of? Yes. Are you, are you LinkedIn, yes. Yes, I would include LinkedIn also next month. Uh, yeah. LinkedIn. What's that? Yeah. Hmm? Yelp. Yelp. Mm, I wouldn't exactly think of it as a social network, but it is very valuable to to use for businesses. Yes. Any other ideas? Social networks. Like I just said, also Peach, Instagram, etc. So what we're going to do is focus on Twitter. But let's take a step back. Let's uh, open your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down there. Open a web browser. And I'm going to I'm going to give you a link here of one of the most valuable uh, social network uh, one of the most valuable websites about social networks and technology, which is mashable.com. M A S H a B L E Mashable.com. Let's go to that website. Take a quick look at it. So we'll be giving you different links as the course goes on. One of them is Mashable.com. They're about technology, social media, keeping up to date with apps, all of this stuff. That's always that's, a, that's always a moving target. So on Mashable. The president is actually one of the best users of social media. Um, for example, the State of the Union is going on right now, but um, the White House is using uh, Snapchat and Instagram and a website and all of that. So the point basically of all of our social media is a form of marke marketing, a form of advertising to reach an audience. You might not have ever heard of Mashable, but I'm going to let you know of a, about it because at the top left, you can go to the little menu, and you can see, well, show me everything regarding social media, technology, business. So that little menu at the top left, that little three-line menu, can show you the latest articles on social media. Mashable is also a superstar in social media itself. It practices what it preaches. Yes? Um, do you see the icons of the... That's okay. If you don't quite see it, we're going to go to it directly. What I'm getting at is that many websites nowadays have an online presence, not only on their website, but on social media. So let's go to twitter.com slash Mashable. Twitter.com slash Mashable. Mashable has a website, Mashable.com, but they've also got a Twitter. They've also got a Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Google+, etc. to drive more traffic back to their website. Mashable here on their Twitter account. They have their branding, their logo, a graphic up here, uh, their actual tweets and such, and then stats. They've tweeted 172,000 times, actually 172,275. They've tweeted a lot. They're following 2,800 accounts, so we'll see what that means, and they've got six, almost six and a half million followers. Basically that means six and a half million people have subscribed to, have followed Mashable on Twitter to keep up to date with their latest tweets, their latest posts, latest tweets, six and a half million people. One of the important metrics of social media is followers. 
not only is it a good ego boost to have six and a half million followers, but it's also good business sense in that the more followers you have, the more potential customers you have. It doesn't mean by any stretch of the imagination that those six and a half million people are going to buy my product or donate to my cause or read my blog posts. But the more of them that I have, the higher possibility to reach an audience that does follow through. If I post, if I tweet a coupon, if I tweet, read our blog post, if I tweet something, there's a very low percentage that will actually follow through. To be very conservative, we have the one percent rule. One percent of our followers are going to be the ones that are the most, um, you know, engaged and hardcore and actually follow through. Let's figure out one percent of six and a half million. Six and a half million. One percent of that. Sixty-five thousand. So only sixty-five thousand people in theory, could be the most engaged, the ones that are ready to take out their credit card and buy your product, to hire you, to look at your paintings, to read your blog post. One percent. So the more followers I have, the more possibility that I have people to actually do what I need them to do. If I've got 100 followers, what's one percent of 100? One. So if I've only got 100 followers, possibly one, could be the most hardcore that actually follows through. Pob uh, possibly your brand is so amazing that maybe 50% of your followers really follow through. Great, that's still 50 people. Is that enough to build a business? Maybe you're really amazing, a superstar on, on, on social media. Maybe 99% of your followers really follow through. That's still 99 people. So the more followers you get, the more possibility that you can have those that actually follow through. Mashable's main goal of their Twitter account is for you to follow a link, for you to maybe see a preview of something and follow a link, because Twitter at the moment only has 140 characters to work with. Characters, which include letters and numbers and spaces and symbols and emoji and all of that. So most tweets also have a link. So the point is, they're going to tweet something with a little preview, and then I want to click on it to take me back to read the full article on their website. And the point of taking me to their website, really, unfortunately, most of the time, is then to sell something, like click on that for advertising. But the point is, get them to your website and accomplish the goal that you want them to on your website. Sell them something, have them read something, teach them something, whatever it is you're doing on your website. Whatever the goal of your website is. That's why we're bringing traffic back to the website. Because on Twitter, at the moment, us little people can't sell a product on Twitter yet. Amazon can, and uh, you know, Macy's and whatever, but we're not that, we're not that size we can't sell a product directly on Twitter yet. We can't sell a product directly on Pinterest yet. We can always guide them from our Pinterest, from our um, Facebook, etc., back to my website, over to my eBay, to my Etsy, whatever, where I actually can sell. Here we're just advertising. Just like when you get that coupon, someone's handing out coupons and it's got a coupon, you can't do anything with the coupon until you go to the store and use the coupon. So that's the big idea of how we're going to use social media for business. We're going to use it as a marketing tool to reach an audience that cares about our product and then bringing them back to our website where we can actually um, sell them something, educate them, have them read our article, look at our um, paintings, whatever we're trying to get them to do. Let's compare Mashable's Twitter. Let's open another window or tab, and this time we'll go to facebook.com slash Mashable. 
since Mashable is all about technology, cutting edge and such, you better believe that they, as soon as a new network is announced, they go out and claim the name. So no one else can take that name. So that no one else can impersonate them or steal their traffic and such. So that's why I would say you might not ever use Instagram. But you want to claim the name as soon as you can in case you're going to use it in the future and perhaps so that no one else can use it in your stead to impersonate you. Facebook.com slash Mashable. Oh, I forgot. Facebook is uh, probably not going to let us see it unless we log in. So if you can see the Mashable Facebook page, great. Take a quick look at it. I can't. I'm not going to log in. Don't worry. But yes, Mashable also has a Facebook account. They post stuff on, Mashable, on Facebook. Maybe not the exact same content, but they post very similar content. Oftentimes it's very similar in that they post something on Facebook, a snippet to get you to come back to the website, where at the website you can read the whole article, where you can buy something, where you can look at the ads. So I can't go forward, but it's got a Facebook. Let's look at google.com slash plus Mashable. Notice on all three of these platforms, on all three of these profiles at the moment, they're all very consistent. The brand name is the same. You want to strive for that because once, you're, once you've got a company name, you want it to be as consistent as possible platform to platform. And it happens that you don't claim a name and then someone else takes it. On most of my profiles, it's my name. But guess what? There's more than one Victor Campos in the world. So on one or two networks, I have to be the Victor Campos. The Google Plus profile is this one, google.com slash plus Mashable. <clears throat> and when we talk about Google Plus next time, often the first question that people ask is, is Google Plus really relevant? I keep reading articles that it's dying. They've been saying that from day one, 2012. Okay, it's past 2012, several years. The reason Google Plus is not going away is because Google Plus is owned by Google. Technically, the, the brand new parent company, Alphabet. Did you know that? That Alphabet is the brand new parent company of Google? It's just for all intents and purposes, keep saying Google. Google owns Google Plus. Google owns YouTube. Google owns Gmail. Google owns Android. Google owns... Google search. Huge company. And it has all of its systems integrated. If you've got an Android phone, you get a free Gmail. Google search, Google Plus, Google Photos, all of that. And Android phones are the largest market share. Bigger than iPhone, actually. And Google search. If I go over to google.com and search, I could get results I can get results, and I can get some results that look like this, nice and pretty, that stand out compared to the other boring links. More people are more apt to click on the nice pretty links over here than the boring links here. And these pretty links come from having a Google Plus profile, a Google Plus business page. So if you want to appear like this, stand out like this from your competition, that's one of the reasons to get Google Plus. We'll talk about that next time. That's why we're covering Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Facebook, because it's also the biggest network in the world. One and a half billion people worldwide. Not million, billion. One and a half billion people worldwide. And Twitter also has hundreds of millions of users, about 320 million globally. And over on their Google Plus page, they've got 5.6 million followers. More followers on Google Plus than Twitter. Even though you have never used Google Plus, maybe, maybe you never, maybe you don't know anyone that's used Google Plus personally. There's right here five and a half million people that follow them on Google Plus, and the Facebook is also like four million or three million or something. It's actually the lowest one. When I was able to show this class last time, number one for Mashable was Google Plus, number two was Twitter, number three was Facebook. We'll get to Facebook later. But it's just another social network. They're posting stuff. It might not be the exact same content, 
This was posted an hour ago, three hours ago, four hours ago, very active on all of these networks. This was posted at, during the time I've been talking. Uh, Mashable has tweeted four new things. They're very active on social media. One of the secrets, which is not really a secret, to get followers on social media is be active. Don't just create the account and log on once a month, once a quarter, once a year. You want to be active and use it on a regular basis. As a beginner, I can say use your social media at least once a week. Better, once a day? That's a lot of effort. So as a beginner, make a note, once a week, use your social media once a week, how we're going to talk about it in the class. Uh, social media, use it once a week, and that will help you increase your followers, which helps increase your traffic. And people might ask, well, if I'm going to be tweeting or posting on Facebook or whatever, once a week, once a day, is it okay to repost the same thing every on every network? It's okay, but it's not as effective. It's better to post different things on different networks. And yeah, that could be three times the work if you're on three networks. What you could do is if you're using a photo, perhaps use the same photo on the different networks, but different sorts of text or different sorts of snippets to entice people to follow you on each network. Because you might think, how am I going to convince people if I've already got followers on Twitter? How am I going to convince them to come over to Google Plus? You're going to convince them by having original content on each network, not redundant content. I already follow you on Twitter. I see the same thing on Google+. Why would I follow you on Google+. I see different things on Twitter, different things on Google+. I'll follow you on both. I don't want to miss anything. I want to miss your coupon on Google+, that you didn't post on Twitter. That's more work, of course, but it's more effective. Different content on different networks. Yes? I know you saw people uh, put uh, uh, a sign, uh, a pow sign on the bottom of the post. Mm -hmm. Why that for? That's a hashtag, and we'll be talking in detail about hashtags on Twitter, but it's basically a keyword for your posts so that people can find it. So we'll get into the detail today about that exactly, but that's a hashtag, that little pound sign. Yes? Why don't you want them to see you on more than just one of the social networks since like for example you might have a link to your website on each of them mm -hmm. well, couldn't they get what they want what do you want them to get from just one you mean a link in their about page for example I what, don't know what, I'm talking about. <laughs> what i what i mean is that if you've got a link on your profile back to your website that's good but unless you're posting your link over and over they're not going to see it so you still want them, perhaps, to follow you on different networks because people might not like Twitter, so they use Facebook. People might not like Facebook, so they use Twitter. So we want to hit them wherever they're at. Not necessarily that we want them on all the networks, but we just want to get as many people as possible on every network. So the more we're active on each network and add content, the better probability that we have to get more followers on the networks. So that's the theory. We want to run different social media accounts, profiles. We want to add content that is unique to each of them to get followers. And the followers are then to bring traffic back to the website. Question? Yeah, uh, unique content. Um, say, like, where, where, where do a lot of people pick this up at? Are they taking it from other people's unique content and, and redistributing it? Or are they actually coming up with it? There's a, a mixture of both. Original content, repurposed content. There's a mixture. But I would say, and in my recommendation, I'm going to write a note here, um, I would say 80% original content, 20% repurposed content. Repurposed content is other people's content. You can't quite build 
a very good empire on other people's work. Because for various reasons, it might be copyrighted. They might not let you use their content. And why are you advertising so much of other people's work? You want to be as original as possible, as many times as possible, but you might get writer's block. We can use other people's content. And social media is in that really gray area nowadays of copyrights, because it's so easy to retweet something, to reshare something, to copy and paste. But we still want to think about it in terms to some degree of the old style of copyrights. If someone has a physical thing and I don't own it, I'm not going to take it and use it as my own. And I know in the digital world is a little different, but that still applies very legal-wise. If someone else created a blog post about the best stocks to buy, you don't want to take their post word, by word for word and reshare it, or a link to theirs, because you're just giving them traffic and perhaps hurting their copyrights and such. So if we're thinking more of original, our own original content, and sometimes, once in a while, other people's content, you'll be better off. And we'll be talking about that it, we could get writer's block, so we'll be talking about ways to keep your content fresh. Um, we're going to create a Twitter account right now if you don't have one. Um, Facebook and Google Plus and other networks ask you to create a business account. Twitter has no, differenti no differentiator. When you create a Twitter account, it could be for personal or business. But on Facebook, Google Plus, and other networks, Pinterest, they do ask you to create a business account when you create one on their networks. If you didn't do it that way, when we talk about those networks, we'll talk about how to fix it. Because technically, if you created a, a business page on Facebook, but you didn't do it through, the, through their official way, technically, you're violating their terms of conditions, and they could shut it down. Also, if you don't set it up as a business page, you don't get all of the features of a business page. A Facebook business page has likes, not friends. So if your business Facebook, if your business Facebook page has friends, you didn't do it right. You need likes not friends. We'll talk about how to fix that. Twitter, though, doesn't have that differentiator. A Twitter account is a Twitter account. Doesn't matter business or personal. Um, so, Twitter, if you haven't heard about it, of course, is the social network with short messages, 140 characters at a time, but they're not limited to only text because I'm seeing pictures, I'm seeing links, I'm seeing video animated GIFs, I'm seeing sound, so you're not limited to only text on Twitter, even though you've got 140 characters. You look at that and you say, that looks much more than 140 characters. What's the secret? That's a picture. This is a picture of text. That's the, that's the, that's the way to get many more characters. If you make a picture in Photoshop or Paint or whatever graphic software. If you make a picture of text, you have more than 140 characters. The downside of that is it's not selectable. I can select the word strongest. It's regular text. But I can't select the word biggest. It's a picture. The whole thing gets selected. But this is one secret here. If, you, if, you, if you've seen people post way more than, than you, it's probably a picture. Pictures, text, video, audio, you can do all of that. So it's not just, it's not, it's not limiting. You might think 140 characters, I don't have much to say. I mean, I, don't, I have much more to say than that. I'm going to run out of space. Most of these tweets have a link back to the full article. At the moment, Twitter is experimenting with possibly giving us the ability to add more text on our tweets. Supposedly, Rumor has it, they might allow it to be up to 10,000 characters. So now suddenly you're going to be able to write a whole essay in your tweet. I haven't seen it. They're beta testing it and such. I don't know how it looks like. I personally don't like that. I've been using Twitter since 2009. I like its 
character and its limitations and its style. I feel that Twitter is trying a little too hard to be like Facebook. And full disclosure, I don't like Facebook. I don't like to use Facebook for personal, but I love to use Facebook for business. For business, Facebook is amazing. For personal, I don't like it. I hardly log on. The last time I logged on was sometime in December to post a picture of my cat. And before that, like three months before that. But Twitter, I'm on it every day. Google Plus, I'm on it every day. Vine, I'm on it every other day. I like every other network. I don't like Facebook for various reasons we'll get into later. But I don't, I, I don't like that Twitter is trying to be more like Facebook now because they're also on the stock market. Did you know you can buy stock in Twitter, the company? You can buy stock in Facebook, the company, in LinkedIn, Yelp, all of these tech companies. And because they're a publicly traded company and the answer to shareholders now, they think that to be more like Facebook, they'll be successful. I personally think that goes against the original character and charter of Twitter, but who am I? I am a shareholder. <laughs> but um, what we're going to do is create an account, talk about setting it up properly, getting followers, do's and don'ts, posting original interesting content, and um, we'll see how it goes. So um, let's go up to twitter.com. If you've already got a Twitter account, you can log into it. Or I recommend let's create one, let's create an account right now because again, uh, you can make mistakes and it won't affect your real account. If you've created an account a few years ago, they change this once in a while. For example, this whole new moments thing. We'll talk about that later. But um, we're going to go on the top right corner, either sign up or log in. I'm going to go through the sign up process. If you've already got an account, log in, and we'll catch up with you in just a moment. So I'm going to click sign up. The first thing that it asks us, full name. This can be your company name. So I'm going to make up a company here. Victor's Bakery. You notice I've got capital letters and apostrophes and spaces and such. The thing about Twitter is there are two names. This full name and a username. The full name can have spaces and capitals and symbols, exclamation points, smileys and emojis and all of that. See how it lets me do that. Later on another screen we will see the username. The username has many more limitations. The username can only be lower, uh, can only be no spaces, no symbols, and less than 15 characters. We'll see that on the next screen. This screen, you, write, you want to write the name of your business exactly as it should be written. There is a limit so if your name is a long business name, you have to still fit it in within those spaces. You might have to be creative. I might have um, Victor's Web Design Studio. I'm out of space. Well, I might have to choose something like V's Web Design Studio. It doesn't fit either. Victor's Web Design Stud, but maybe not. So you have a limited amount of space here, that's your company name, you can change that as many times as you want. And this name here is not unique because I can create this account right now and it will let me. See? So yeah, great, welcome. It'll let me choose any name here. The username, however, on the next screen is the unique one. On the next screen, is where we choose our username. We'll get to that in a moment. That's the one that unique that only one account in the world can have. This full name here, anyone can have that name, even multiple times. Question. So let's put our full name here. Company name is fine. It asks for phone number or email. Put in an email. This is going to be an email that you want that you'll be able to access
Twitter wants to confirm that you're a real company or a real person, so you want to put in your real email address that you can access for it to confirm it's you, because anyone can create any account and any full name here, there's spammers. And so in order for Twitter to try to weed them out, it has various protections. One of them is either phone number or valid email address. Password, you can change this later. You can change any of this stuff at any time. You can change your full name whenever you want. You can change your username whenever you want. It will let you. And then we've got tailored Twitter based on recent website visits. Just like every other website out there, um, Twitter is going to put a cookie on your computer. Basically, a cookie is a little tracking file. That sounds scary, but every website does it. Unless you're in private mode and such, unless you disable cookies and such, every website does it. Have you noticed you visit a website, you look at some products, you go to Facebook, and suddenly you see that stuff in Facebook. You visit any other website. I was looking recently at uh, lenses for, can uh, for Canon cameras. I was looking at a website, then I went to another website, and suddenly those Canon cameras were following me on the other website. Cookies. They're a fact of life. And so here, Twitter's asking, would you like to see stuff on Twitter based on your website visits? So if you're really into technology and visits a lot of technology websites like Mashable, you'll see more stuff on Twitter about technology. If you don't want Twitter to show you that stuff, <coughs> turn it off. That doesn't mean it's not going to show you any ads and such. You can't get away ads either. You can't get away from ads either. But do I want ads and tweets and such of stuff that I care about or not? I would say, as a business, this might be useful because there is a value to reconnaissance. There is a value to see what the competition is doing, what the competition is tweeting, their kinds of pictures and their kinds of content for me to get an idea for me to do something similar or better. Not for me to steal their tweets, but for me to get an idea to do something along those lines, but in my vein, like my company. There's a few terms of conditions and privacy policy listed here. Basically, you're not going to use Twitter to harass people, hate messages and violence and all of that, in theory. Um, if you agree to those terms, to those terms, you want to click sign up, and here's something I hadn't noticed before, advanced options, what's that? Let others find me by my email address, let others find me by my phone number. Okay, so those, both of those are on at the moment. If you plugged in a, a phone number, um, that means that if you have connections that know your phone number, they can find you on Twitter, which may or may not be valuable. Question? Yeah, say I, would, I put in the name Alltech and began the registration, then I wanted to go in and enhance it to Alltech Imaging Tech, right? a longer handle. Are you able to merge the accounts at any time, or do you just have to? You can merge the accounts, definitely. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, you can merge the, the names, but you might not need to merge them, depending on your particular setup. So that might be something we look at during the... What's that? Yes, you can definitely edit these names. So these over here, if you don't want people to find you based on your email, you can turn them off. They all they both seem to be on at the moment. If it's a business email address, then that's not a problem. I want people to find my Twitter account based on my business email address. If it's personal, you may or may not want to do that. That seems to be hidden here unless you look at advanced options. And on another screen, if you don't have this screen, we can change that on another screen later. I'm going to leave these on and click sign up. It might then ask you for a phone number. Again, this is to keep your account secure because what if your account gets hacked? It happens all the time, especially if you don't have a great password. Someone might figure it out. Well, if you've got your phone number in the account, you'll be able to retrieve your account via text message and such. Whoever broke into your account probably doesn't have your phone also, so you'll be able to retrieve your account. It is optional. Notice there is a skip button. You can skip it.
and here's the username. And again, it can be changed any, as many times as you want. This is the one that is more limited. No spaces, no special characters like exclamation points or pound signs, smileys and such. You can use capitalization, even though the examples don't show it. But you can use capitalization, and there's no difference between uppercase and lowercase. I like to use capitalization for readability, because let's say I've got Victor's Bakery. That might be a little hard to read, because it's run together. But if I wrote it as Victor's Bakery, both of those are equivalent. It's just that this is a little more readable for people. And whoops, this name's already taken. Well, my company's, uh, my family's had this company for the last 20 years. Too bad someone took this two weeks ago. It's yes. theirs. So I can be the Victor's Bakery. But not enough space. So again, we have a limitation on the amount of characters here. That can be frustrating. It gives us suggestions here also. So I either think of a name, choose an example. I can do I can do Bakery Victors. For the moment, I'll say sure, and we can change that. So we can put numbers in it. You can put underscores. What about Victors underscore Bakery? Taken. Okay. What about Victors underscore underscore Bakery? Available. So this unique name, only one account in the world can have it. Only one of the 320 million or so users of Twitter in the world can have that name. The full name a moment ago, that's the one that anyone can have any name as many times. You don't know how many Darth Vaders there are on Twitter. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's only one Darth Vader user. I'll click Next. If you created a, a Twitter account a couple of years ago, it basically just, you created the account, it plopped you in, here's Twitter, have fun, with not, without a lot of guidance. Now, because they're a bigger, more mature company, publicly listed in the stock market and such, they're a little more user-friendly. One of the things is, it wants to help you connect with accounts that are relevant to you. It wants to help you follow relevant accounts. And there is a value for your business to follow other users or businesses, as I'll explain why in a moment. But everyone's on Twitter. Ellen DeGeneres, the president, would-be presidential candidates, the school, myself, my company, um, everyone's on Twitter. So I'm going to click Let's Go. And here it says, what kind of content are, is your account interested in? And it is valuable to follow accounts because... I'm going to turn off popular accounts because that's going to say, well, why don't you follow um, Justin Bieber and, <laughs> and uh, Kim Kardashian and all of those celebrities. But no, I don't want to follow popular accounts. I want to focus on news or entertainment or, or as many as you want. My company is a bakery. Which of these fit? Food and drink. So it's going to suggest to me. It's not going to do it automatically. It's going to suggest to me, why not follow this account or that account? And it is valuable for your company to follow other accounts because, again, check what the competition is doing. Get inspiration right. from them. What are the trends? Am I falling behind? Look at what they've tweeted and what I've learned about, and I'll do it my way. So select as many of these categories as you want. I'm just going to select one, food and drink fits for me. Next screen, continue. It says, okay, these are accounts related to food and drink. It's suggesting to me 40 accounts I can follow or not. So I'm going to remove a few of these, perhaps just to show you. I'm going to remo remove a few of these that don't quite relate to what I'm about, but yeah, I want to follow these chefs here, and CNN, sure, and this food blog, there's Mashable, and local news, Qualcomm, Mario Batali, Bill Gates. You can turn them on and off, you can turn them all on, all off, 
You can add them again later or remove them later. Just want to select a few here so that I don't have an empty Twitter account so that I can get inspiration from the competition. Click follow and continue. We'll go into more detail in a bit, but one tactic to get followers is for you to follow an account. If I follow a hundred accounts, that doesn't mean a hundred will follow me back. Let's say 20 follow me back, 70 follow me back, 3 follow me back. I can get followers just by me following accounts. There's more effective ways, as we'll see, but it is valuable to follow because I can get a follow back. But you won't get follow backs, follows backs, you won't get follow backs um, if you have a very basic account that hasn't even been completed. I don't have my logo on my account, I don't have a biography, an about us info, I don't have links, I don't have anything on my account yet. But before we go into a follow frenzy, in a moment we're going to see about completing our account because there's nothing to entice people to follow back. I'm following the Food Network because they've got great tweets about food. And my company's about food. But I'm not going to get customers to follow me if I've got nothing on my account. Not even a company logo and such. I don't have my company logo with me. I'll do it at home. I'll make a note. One of the things you want to do is add your company logo and other branding, as we'll see how in a moment. Question. Do you have a way of knowing who your followers are? Definitely. We'll, we'll see a screen here, a list of all the followers, in what order they followed you, and everything about them. I don't have a picture, so I'm going to skip it. But if you want to connect with Facebook, it will connect to your Facebook and grab your picture. I'm going to skip that. Just click, just click Skip for now, but you do want to add your company logo as soon as you can. Okay. One way also to get followers is to connect to them via their email. If you've got a bunch of customers on Gmail, then you connect your Gmail account here, it'll tell you. These customers of yours are on Twitter. Why not follow them? If you follow them, they can follow you back. Again, more followers, because we're thinking of that 1% target. The more people know that you're on Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever, the more they can fulfill the goal of selling a product, getting subscribers to your newsletter, whatever. I'm going to skip this at the moment. You can do it later. You can come back to it that could be valuable to start building a follow base connect your emails you can connect them all but I'll skip it for the moment at some point if this is going to be your serious account you're going to want to confirm your email address this is just a test account to learn this so I'm not going to confirm it but at a certain point you'll want to confirm your email to get all the features. Yes? No, you can only have one account per email, but we can have multiple people working on the same account using something we'll look at later called TweetDeck. So we can have multiple managers managing one account see that a little later. But if I try to create another account with the same email, I can't do that. We're going to take a break soon, but before that, and we'll be looking at these different screens, what do they all mean? On the top right corner is a little egg. If you don't put in your logo, you're going to be just an egg. And you're not going to be very enticing to be followed. I want my logo there, just like the CW has, just like Jimmy Fallon, just like the Chargers have. I want to put my own logo there. I want to have my branding so that I, so that I stand out like that. I want to have a biography so that people know they're following the right account. Let's take a quick look at that, then we'll take a break. Click on your little egg at the top right. That's your profile and settings. If you've already got a logo there, you'll see your logo. If you click on the Profile and Settings, you'll see a bunch of settings which we'll talk about. But let's click on View Profile. 
click on your settings up here, view profile, and this is what your profile looks like for someone that comes across your account for the first time. Empty. Just a bunch of blue, nothing about you, not even a first tweet. But that's your address up there. Twitter.com slash whatever your username was. Now you have your own little piece of Twitter. Twitter.com slash whatever your username was. If suddenly you say, oh, I chose a terrible username. We can change that in the settings, which we'll look at later, but it's going to be under the settings. So now I have an official Twitter account. Twitter.com slash Victor's underscore underscore bakery. And it's a very basic account with no enticement for people to follow. So under this screen, we've got edit profile. Top right here, click Edit Profile. We have a header photo, which is a nice big horizontal graphic to catch people's attention. Again, if we look at the profiles of other accounts, we can get inspiration. But we can use this, that spot to put a nice big photo of our product, or our storefront, or our employees. Or if I know some Photoshop, I can make a graphic that's nice and wide that has text. We'll see examples of other accounts, but that's a graphic I also want to fill in at some point. I don't have it handy, so I can't. The profile photo is where you want to put in your company logo. It's a little square shape. So if, you're hor if your logo is more horizontal, then square it might cut off, just like KUSI News is cutting off a bit here. It's cutting off the edges there. So think in terms that your logo where it looks best as a square. <laughs> Under this edit screen is also another place where I can change my full name, your company name. This is the one where I can change it. Uh, Victor's Bakery exclamation point. Sure. This is where I can put in uh, emoji or emoticons, etc. But I want to change this name, and that's on another screen. We'll look at it later. It's under settings. What I do want to fill in, what I can fill in in this screen, is a bio, a biography. In this little box here, you have, I believe, 160 characters to write a biography to get found. Because we will see that search is very useful. If someone ser is searching for tax preparers in Imperial Beach, they could find your Twitter account. Maybe they don't find your main website, but if they find your Twitter account, and on your Twitter account you also have a link back to your website, it doesn't matter that you weren't number one, your website wasn't number one on a Google search. What if your Twitter account is number one or number two? If you've got a link back to your main website, that's still a win. And what I was getting at was that if I'm writing my bio here and I just write bakery, in San Diego. That's okay, but I have 160 characters to put in keywords, concepts for when someone searches, when someone searches they could find me. I'm gonna go like this. Family owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake, California. Specializing, I can use more than one sentence, Specializing in healthy goodies. And so there is a limit at a certain point. I run out of space. Somewhere, eventually, it tells you you ran out of space. It'll go red when you went too far. It doesn't hurt then to use as much space as possible there, especially if you're putting in keywords about your business. So when someone finds you in a Google search, in a Twitter search, in a Bing search, people get creative here also. Um, I could write, for example, um, exclusive Twitter coupons. And that becomes an active link. Someone visits my profile, they look at that bio, and there's an active link for them to click on. 
So it's not limited to simply just a biography. It can have links. It can have hashtags, which we'll talk about what hashtags are later. But taking advantage of that, you have the space for it. Location can be a real sort of location. It might have figured out where I am based on various factors, but I can put San Diego, and then that'll put my tweets on a map. I can get a little more detail, maybe zip code 90914. Also, I could just be funny also, such as state of insanity. I can put whatever I want there, basically. A little bit extra text, especially if you've got a physical location. It's very useful to put that so people can find you. They follow you on the app. You have a map attached to your profile. They can get driving directions to your store. And website again, my website. Or a landing page, which is just any page below your main root of your website. Here's the root of your website. Any sub-page of your website basically is a landing page. So here people can go directly to the coupon screen instead of just the home page. That's, that's legitimate as well. You can change theme colors. It's a little basic. A few colors here. Or if you know your color code, it's a little bit out of our scope, but if you know your color code, can choose that perfect shade of red. Not that red, that red. Birthday. Well, that would be the founding of your company and such. That's optional. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't have it really, at the moment, really any use just yet. Most likely at a certain point, Twitter will activate some feature related to that, like a happy birthday message or something. But for a company, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to add it but this is one of the basic things that I can say as soon as possible you want to brand, finish the branding of your Twitter account. Header photo, profile photo, this bio info as soon as you can. Because that's how you entice people to follow you. No one wants to follow an egg. Those are usually spanners. You want to complete your profile. I'm going to save those changes. We'll do one little, one more thing and then we'll take a break. Our first tweet. You can either write a brand new tweet ourselves or use one of the traditional classic tweets. The very first tweet of the very first person on Twitter was just setting up my Twitter back in 2006. So this is the 10th year anniversary of Twitter this year. Um, the very first tweet was just setting up my Twitter. To keep the tradition alive, I like to select that as the first tweet. You can put whatever else you want. I'll tell you in more detail in a bit after the break how to tweet effectively. But just for fun, as our first tweet, we can delete it if we want. We're gonna, I'm going to tweet that tweet as my very first company tweet. And now if someone visited my profile, they would see all of this and my first tweet. Victor's Bakery tweeted that. We'll go into all the nuances of this, of course, right after the break. Any general questions at the moment? Mm -hmm. Can you tell uh, again a little bit of the difference between the full name and the username? For example, the first name is the full name or the user's name? This one with apostrophes and spaces is the full name. And then the one that is more limited, no spaces, no apostrophes, is the username. Okay, what shows up in the, uh, in the address line? Like if you type it in up there. In the address is the username. The username shows up in the address, which is this one here. Would the candidate be the same as long as they follow the limitations? Yes. I wanted mine to be the same, but I couldn't because someone else took Victor's Bakery. So I have to I had to change the username. Because also the username, there can only be one of them in the world, spelled that way. I wanted Victor's Bakery with put together, but it was taken. The full name, anyone can have as many of these in the world. They're not unique. 725, let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 735, and we'll come back to 
using Twitter more effectively.